Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. I'm glad you could join me today so that we can look into the Word of God and receive life-changing words. In Deuteronomy 32 verse 47, Moses had just finished talking to them about the laws of God and he says, These instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land you will occupy when you cross the Jordan River. In other words, Moses was saying that what will guarantee long life, what will guarantee success is nothing else but obeying the word of God. Now, you know, it's easier to read the word of God than to obey. So we need the grace of God to help us to obey the word of God. Let's ask for this grace to rest upon our lives. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for showing us your ways through your word. Lord, I ask for a release of your grace upon your people that today they are going to live according to your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you talk to an average Jew, one of the things you will notice is that he's extremely proud to be a descendant of Abraham. It is a really big deal to any Jew to be associated in any shape and form to Abraham. Even when Jesus was walking on the face of the earth, you see the Pharisees proud in the fact that they are descendants of Abraham. So if you read Matthew chapter 3 verse 9 for instance um, Jesus was talking to them and he said don't just say to each other we are safe for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing for I tell you God can create children of Abraham from these stones. So in other words the Jews and the Pharisees and all those people were feeling very safe and secure not because of what they have done, but because of what they know that Abraham had done. They knew that Abraham had had a covenant with God and that covenant was covering them. So they were very happy. They were excited. They were proud to be associated with Abraham. And so they felt it was such a big deal. And many times they didn't even listen to Jesus simply because they felt that their security lay in their relationship with Abraham. But you know what? As beautiful as being a child of Abraham is, as wonderful and as powerful as being associated with Abraham is, nothing compares to being a child of the Most High God. You can't compare it in any way. Now, Abraham has two types of descendants. He has a natural descendant and these are people who come from Israel, his descendants, but he also has spiritual descendants and these are people who are connected to him by the covenant of Jesus Christ. No matter how connected you are to Abraham in the natural, your connection to Abraham in the spiritual is far more. It is greater because you are connected through Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.16 says, God gave the promise to Abraham and his child and notice that the scripture doesn't say to his children as if it meant many descendants rather it says to his child and that of course means Christ so what the Bible is saying is that the promises and the inheritance that God gave Abraham was to Abraham and his seed his seed meaning Jesus Christ not seeds meaning the children of Israel seed meaning Jesus Christ so anyone can partake of the covenant of God if he's connected through Jesus Christ he can assess everything that God told Abraham, God promised Abraham, God covenanted with Abraham. So the best thing that can happen to anyone is not to be connected to Abraham in the physical. It is to be connected to Jesus Christ because you are a child of God. And do you know why? It is special, really, 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 really special to be a child of God. It is because only God's children can ever inherit the kingdom of heaven. It is because only God's children will ever have their names written in the book of life. It is a big deal for your name not to be written in the book of life because the consequence is eternal damnation in hellfire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Meaning that if you have never come to that point where you recognize that you are a sinner and you recognize you cannot help yourself no matter how hard you try and you recognize that Jesus came to this earth to die for you, pay for your sins and you accept the love of Jesus in your heart and 
You don't just stop there because a lot of people stop there. They put a full stop there and they live carelessly. When you accept Jesus into your heart, the next step is to walk and live in righteousness. The reason is because Revelation 21 verse 10 tells us something. It's talking about the holy city, Jerusalem. That's the new Jerusalem that will come out of heaven. The Bible says, so he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Verse 11 explains how it is. It says, a shone with the glory of God and sparkle like precious stones, like jasper, as clear as crystal. And the remaining verses continue to explain how this beautiful city is. It talked about the 12 gates, you know, talked about all the pearls used to make the city beautiful. And then it continues in verse 27 by telling us who will be allowed in. He says, nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So you can't claim that you're going to heaven. You can't claim that you've been the holy city with the Lord and then you're living a life of spiritual carelessness. You're lying, you're cheating, you're stealing. You're basically just living like someone who has never met the Lord. You will notice that you will not be among those that will be accepted into heaven. The Bible also reiterates this fact. If you read in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 says, But God's foundation standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his let everyone that nameth the name of christ depart from iniquity so you can't be naming the name of christ and be associated with iniquity if you read it from the nlt version it says but god's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription the lord knows those who are his in other words god knows the people whose names are written in the book of life how do you know those who are written in the book of life the bible says all who belong to the lord must turn away from evil in other words the sign that you actually belong to the lord it's not that you're in church it's not that you want souls it's not that you serve it's not that you gave it's not that you did all of those things that is not the sign that you actually belong to the lord that is not the sign that you are a child of god the sign that you belong to the lord the sign that you are a child of god recognized by god not the one your pastor recognizes or the one society recognizes the one that god knows that are his own the bible says all who belong to the lord must turn away from evil so yes you associated with evil before but the bible says to show that you are a child of God, you must turn your back away from evil deliberately so that at the end of the day when you close your eyes here in death or the taking away of the saints which we generally will call the rapture of the saints when jesus comes in the sky to take us away and all of that you will be received into the kingdom where jesus is and you're going to spend an eternity with the lord jesus christ it is a big deal for you to miss heaven it is a big deal to go to hell why is it a big deal because you're never coming out hell has only one entrance it has no exit once you enter into hellfire that is the end there's no begging there's no repentance and guess what it is forever the bible says hellfire is a place of great torment and anguish people will burn forever and ever i can't even just begin to imagine the pain the pain is not even the problem the problem is that it is forever and ever and ever you're never coming out that is why you need to examine yourself to be sure that your name is in the book of life and if your name is not in the book of life you can repent right where you are and ask God to help you to make this journey with him up until the end. Grace is available for you to live like a child of God. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Is your name in this book of life? Is your name in this book of life here? For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube and Telegram, all on the handle Oyeks Alfred. Flipping the pages of this great book This brother gave a cursory gaze He saw the names of prophets, saints and martyrs Who kept the faith and won the race But he said, Mr. Angel, where is my name? Can you tell me what is going wrong? 
I'm a pillar in my local church I give the offerings and the dites Feed the poor and have myself a good name It's my name in this book of life It's my name in this book of life Here, tell me it's my name in this book of life It's my name in this book of life Unforgiveness lurks within your heart Some folks that you will never let go Little foxes and secret faults Will spring surprises on that final day about it. 